Hi everyone, so this is the third video on sorting and in this video I'm going to take a look at quicksort. Now the quicksort algorithm is uh, called quicksort because it is fast. Okay, it is a very fast algorithm. And what it does is it effectively takes the arrays and the, the array that you're trying to sort and turns it into little pieces of arrays that you can then use insertion sort with. Okay, so quick sort actually doesn't necessarily do a lot of sorting itself. It just takes your very, very big problem and turns it into teeny tiny problems that you can then sort, so, solve with insertion sort. Now, insertion sort, you said, well, I thought insertion sort was slow. It is for a very large arrays. Insertion sort for very small arrays, however, is very fast. So whenever we talk about these algorithms, right, we often think about things as, you know, like, oh, as n gets bigger and bigger, it gets so much bigger that this thing is like so bad and takes so much resources, right? We talk about growth rates. But the reality is, is that if you have small data size, some of these algorithms that look bad weren't that bad because n squared at a small value of n is not very big. OK, so insertion sort turns out to be really fast if you have a very small array. So the first question is, what is a really small array, right? Now, it turns out that a small array, um, depending, so uh, in the C compiler world, their sorting algorithms actually done with quicksort. And they, um, they uh, so G, uh, the GNU compiler, like G++, GCC, they believe that the small, the like small values, like small enough to use insertion sort is 16. Visual Studio says it's 32, okay? And Clang does something sort of like some sort of analysis and then goes with some number, okay? But it's around 16 to 32 around there still, okay? So it's not a very big array, you know, like 30 is nothing, right? Uh, 16 is nothing. Uh, but that that's uh, the, the time when you use insertion sort. OK, so any array that is small enough, you can use insertion sort on it. So the idea behind quick sort is actually this. Now, I, I like to sort of view this as sort of like a messy pile. If, what it does is it actually takes all the numbers and it groups it into two groups. And it does this by, first of all, picking a pivot. So I'm going to choose a pivot here of eight. OK, so this is what we call the pivot. Now. The algorithm says, I'm going to take every single number that is in the pivot, and I'm going to put all the numbers that are smaller to one side and all the numbers that are bigger to the other side. So for every single, for, so what I do is I, I start off by saying, okay, one smaller, seven smaller, 12, that's bigger, nine, that's bigger, 15 is bigger, five is smaller, six is smaller, two is smaller, three, that's smaller too, and 14. It simply takes the entire array and takes every number that is smaller than the pivot and puts it all to the left-hand side. It's not sorted though. It's simply placed all at the front half of the array. Every number that is bigger than this pivot gets pushed into the back half of the array. And you put the pivot in between these two numbers. So this is how quick sort works. You, you basically start by, you pick a number that's called the pivot and then you take everything smaller and you put it to one end and you take everything bigger and you put it to the other end. So uh, the way that it does this is it uses something called a partitioning algorithm. Uh, now, the reason that I'm not going to use the, the animations like the, in the other videos is because um, the partitioning algorithm is actually different than the one that's currently in the notes uh, in, the, in the example. Uh, the, the one that's on the website is actually like a, a uh, it's a bi-directional one where you basically start at both ends and you swap numbers. Uh, and more popular now and more sort of like the, the current method is to actually not have a bi-directional thing, is to actually just go forward. So I've attempted to make an animation for this and there's a bug that crops up once in a while and I haven't been able to figure out what that bug is yet. So uh, this could go very badly. There could be a bug that shows up and hopefully it doesn't, but we shall see, okay? So this is a uh, quick sort. Uh, this is not actually available yet because uh, I haven't finished it. 
Uh, so hopefully there's no bug. Let's find out. Okay. So this is the algorithm that's actually dis uh, as described in the course notes currently. Okay. And so right now we have an array that is apparently sorted. So I guess I'm going to have to restart that. We'll pause it. So, oh, hmm. ah, there we go. Pause. Okay. So here we go. Uh, this array is not sorted. Okay. And what we do is we're going to pick a pivot. Now, um, it's doing this fairly randomly, but uh, what you have to do with the pivot is you have to move it to the back. So I'm going to slow this down, and I'll talk about it over the video. So you pick a pivot, and you put it at the back of the array. It's important that the pivot's not anywhere in the array. It has to be out of the way. And what happens is you're basically putting every number that is smaller than the pivot into the first half of the array. And every number that is bigger than the pivot um, is you, you're effectively swapping in the smaller numbers to the front. So if you see a number that is bigger, you're kind of moving it towards the back of the array. That's what this is doing. And you keep doing it until you basically have two halves. All of the numbers here are smaller than the pivot. All of the numbers here are bigger than the pivot. So this is what the algorithm is doing. It's basically simply going through and picking out a pivot and then moving all the numbers that are smaller to the front half. So you see this, this isn't exactly an even divide. Uh, the six is going to be here, and then we have sort of two pieces. Okay. Now, this is just demonstrating, so it, it actually doesn't do very much. Uh, but if this was real, then once it gets to a small enough piece, it would actually call insertion sort and sort the whole thing from there. So it wouldn't go all the way until in the, uh, until the array size got to like one. That's not going to happen. Okay. So insertion sort works by effectively making it so that now this is a bad pivot by the way <laughs> 57 is like the biggest number so this is this array isn't going to get split very much okay so now it's going to choose 41 as the pivot it's going to put uh 35 and 39 to the front of the array and then it's going to um uh effectively put the pivot sort of in between okay and now we have two pieces that are small so uh, this is how quick sort works. It works by taking the, the numbers and very, very quickly putting all the small numbers at the front, putting all the big numbers at the back, and then, and then it independently will sort pieces of it once they get small enough. So that's what it is, OK? Now you go, well, so how is this going to help? Like, like why do like this insertion sort still you know, might still bother you, right? Well, insertion sort, as I said, on a very small array, isn't very big. So here's an example. If I told you to have 1 million elements, OK? So 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, OK? Insertion sort for that, oops, sorry. I just realized I'm writing on a tablet that you can't see. Hold on. So let's imagine that I have 1 million elements in my array. If I told you to insertion sort that, n squared would be some constant times 1 million squared. Now, what's 1 million squared? I don't know. Let's, uh, I'm just going to do this. Uh, let's see. This is, this is million. This is billion. This is 1 trillion. So it's 1 trillion times some constant. That's a lot of operations, right? Now, if I do, let, let's not even do um, what they do, which is they get down to arrays of size, like, 32 or 16. But, um, it, well, actually, let's do that. Uh, 32. So uh, I'm going to take out my handy dandy calculator here. Okay. And I'm going to do some math here very quickly. 1 million, that's 100,000 million, 1 million, divided by 32, let's say. So this is what. Um, Visual Studio does. There are 31,250 32 element segments in a 1 million element array. Okay. So, whatever we do, uh, if we split it down to a 32 element chunk, there are going to be that many. Now, what is 32 squared? Okay. 32 to the power of 2 which is really just 32 times 32, is 1,024, OK? 
So if I had to uh, merge sort, uh, sorry, quick sort, if I do insertion sort, uh, each an, an array that only has 32 elements, it's going to cost me this much to sort. I go, well, that's still a pretty big number. Yeah, but this is 1 trillion, right? So if I took this number and multiplied this number by 3, 1, 2, 5, 0, it's still a big number. But that big number is actually 32 million, right? 32 million as compared to 1 trillion, OK? Now let's give you an example of this that might give you some uh, better appreciation for what the difference is. 32 million is an incredibly, incredibly expensive mansion. Okay. Now, 32 million is what? Like, like if you go and buy like one of those like superstar mansions, you can talk 32 million. You can get probably you can probably get one. One trillion is like national debt level amount, right? Like 1 trillion is a huge difference, okay? There aren't houses for this amount, I don't think, okay? So this is a very, these are very two different numbers, okay? This, you know, this is, you know, like this is, you can, you can still win this in a lottery ticket type of deal. That's not available in a lottery ticket. Okay, so just to give you some context of the difference between the two, uh, they're, they're vastly, vastly different numbers. So you can't insertion sort this many, but you can insertion sort 32 million or 32 element array. Uh, you just have to do it multiple times, this many times, okay, to do this. Now, the splitting, of course, is not free. The splitting requires that you go through every single element of the array. But just like with merge sort, what you're doing is you're starting with the whole thing and elements, and you're splitting it into two pieces. We'll assume that it's about equal. Okay. Now there's there's a caveat to all of this, of course. So we're going to assume that we don't choose the wrong pivot all the time, and on average it will be sometimes a little bit more on one side, sometimes a little bit more on the other side, and we will end up with sort of an even sort of split. So half and half, and then if we keep splitting, how many times do we have to do this before we get down to something small enough? And it's just like with uh, merge sort. You, you split, you get half. Then you split again, both sides, and you get quarters. And of course, you have to go through every single element to get to the, the quarter element, uh, quarter array size level. And you have to keep doing this and doing this. So in any case, uh, after all of those splits happen, you're going to end up eventually with arrays that are small enough for you to do insertion sort. Okay. Um, in any case, uh, that's pretty much it for quick sort. Quick sort takes your numbers, puts it into two different piles, smaller than the pivot, bigger than the pivot. Takes each of those piles, does it again and again and again until you get a pile that is small enough for insertion sort to deal with. Okay, so uh, that's it for this video. Thanks.